Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in my series on the OpenRC init system. In the previous video I went over what OpenRC is and how you can use it to get information about services running on your system and also to start, stop, and restart the services that are running on your system. In this video I'm going to go over OpenRC's concept of run levels. I'm going to explain what run levels are in the context of OpenRC and how you can assign services to certain run levels to control things like when and how they are run. Now to begin with, I'll go over what run levels are. The term run level is actually used for two different things on a Gentoo-like system or on any system that is using OpenRC. It's used in the sense of run levels as a Linux and generic Unix topic, which refers to machine states that are entered after boot. And it's also used specifically to refer to OpenRC's concept of run levels. Now the former idea of run levels as a mode of operation in Unix is addressed elsewhere, such as on this Wikipedia page on Unix run levels. Basically, traditionally speaking, run levels in Unix are states that your computer would enter after boot. There are traditionally seven run levels, numbered 0 through 6, and most of the time these individual run levels have specific purposes. For instance, usually run level 0 will halt the machine if you enter it. Basically, your machine will shut down if you enter run level 0. A lot of times, traditionally speaking, run level 6, if you entered it, would restart your machine. And the ones in between have different purposes as well, such as single user environment, or the multi-user environment that represents the typical way that you use your Linux system. Now, if you want to know about run levels in this context, you can read external resources. I will link, for instance, this Wikipedia article somewhere in the description of this video. But I'm only introducing this concept here to to point out that OpenRC's idea of run levels are really somewhat different than this traditional Unix idea of run levels. You see, for OpenRC, I'll just go here to the OpenRC user guide on their GitHub page. For OpenRC, a run level is a group of services that are started at a specific time altogether. Here in this user guide, there's a section on run levels, and you can see that they say it is similar to what was historically offered, but it's not quite the same. Whereas the general idea for Unix run levels represents states that your computer will enter after boot and that have certain characteristics. Run levels for OpenRC really are just collections of services that need to be started, and they are started at certain times altogether. Typically in OpenRC, run levels are used in a specific order when certain important system events happen. As you can see here, it says that the default startup, that is to say whenever you boot your computer, uses the run levels sysinit, boot, and default in that order. That means that whenever you boot up your computer, OpenRC will first go to the sysinit run level and start all of the services in there. Then it will go to the boot run level and start all of the services in there. And then it will go to the default run level and start all of the services in there. Now, roughly, these OpenRC run levels correspond to certain states that your computer will enter, just like traditional run levels, but they apply only to OpenRC specifically. And they happen one after another, at least at boot. For instance, sysinit is supposed to represent the time that your init system is started. And boot is supposed to represent the time that that you boot into your computer. And then the default run level is supposed to represent the multi-user environment that is the default state for you to use your Linux operating system in. Each one of these run levels has a collection of services associated with it. You can see here it says that all run levels are represented as folders in etc run levels. If we go back here to a terminal, we can actually change directory to etc run levels. And if I ls in here real quick, you can see that there is a collection of directories here. And each one of these directories represents a certain run level. Let me show you what that means. If I were to run an ls on, say, the boot directory, which represents the boot run level, you can see that the contents of that directory is actually a bunch of symlinks that point to scripts in etsy init.d. If you watch my first video, you will recall that etsy init.d is where all the scripts that represent the daemons that OpenRC starts and stops live. In the first video, I showed you how to do things like start, stop, and restart daemons by passing commands directly to the scripts that are located in that etsy init.d directory. These symlinks being inside these individual run level directories means that each one of these linked scripts will be started when this run level is entered. There's a different collection of scripts in each run level. For instance, in the default run level, 
you can see that there are scripts like Crony and DHCPCD, which represent the scripts that are started when we enter our default multi-user environment. The fact is that the directories here in Etsy run levels illustrate the fact that for OpenRC, as far as OpenRC is concerned, all a run level is is a collection of processes that are all supposed to be started together all at the same time at a certain specific time. Now the ones that are here in this Etsy run levels directory on my PC are just the basic run levels that come with a fresh install of OpenRC on Gentoo. A user could actually define their own run level by putting a directory here and putting sim links to init scripts inside that directory and thus create their own custom run levels if they so desired. The way to go about doing that is outside the scope of this tutorial, but the idea that you can create your own run levels really is one of the consequences of the fact that as far as OpenRC is concerned, run levels are just directories, meaning that they're mutable, they're changeable, and you could add run levels if you so choose. All right, that should be a good primer on the concept of run levels in the context of OpenRC. So let's go over how we would add and or remove processes from a run level. If you'll recall from my first video, I mentioned that in order for OpenRC to ever even start a daemon, that daemon has to be assigned to some run level. If a daemon isn't assigned to any run level, OpenRC will never start it automatically. The best way in OpenRC to add a service to a run level is to use the rc-update command. RC update is used for managing run levels in OpenRC and it's one of the most common commands that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis in a system that uses OpenRC. It has a very simple syntax. I'll have to run it with sudo permissions to show you what it does. And the most common way that you will be using it is to either add a service to a run level or to delete a service from a run level. We'll cover the first process to begin with. Let's say that I want to add NTPD to the default run level. Well, the way to do that is very easy. I'll just run RC update add followed by the name of the service, in this case NTPD, and then followed by the name of the run level, in this case default. And as you can see, the output of the command says service NTPD added to run level default. And indeed, if we go in here and we ls etsy run levels default, you can see that NTPD is in there right now. That means that whenever the default run level is executed in OpenRC, NTPD will be among the services that are started at that time. As you recall from the previous description of the default run level, that time happens to be at the end of the initial boot process. Remember, the run levels go sysinit, then boot, then default when you boot into a system using OpenRC. The syntax for removing a process from a run level is just as simple. Instead of doing sudo rc update add ntpd default, you will do rc update delete ntpd default to delete the ntpd service, for instance. So if I go ahead and run that and then ls default again, you can see that ntpd is gone now. It no longer appears in this directory, which means that ntpd will no longer be started at boot time when we enter the default run level. Now it should be noted that just adding a process to a run level will not cause it to be automatically started in your current session. All it's going to do is it's going to schedule it to be started the next time whatever run level you assign that process to is entered. For instance, in the case of NTPD, that process is currently stopped on my system. If I use RC status dash S and grip for NTPD, which I explained how to do this in the previous video, to search specifically for the NTPD process, you can see that it displays as having been stopped. So the NTPD process is not currently running. If I were to run RC update add NTPD default, the process gets added and we can see it in the default directory in Etsy run levels. But if we were to run RC status and grip for NTPD again, you can see that the process is still stopped. Simply adding it to the default run level won't cause the program to automatically start even though we are in the default run level right now. If we want to go ahead and start this process, we would have to do something like pass the start command to etc init.d, in this case ntpd, as I showed you how to do in the first video. And as you can see, that will start NTPD, and if we grip for it again, we can see that it has now been started. So just remember that simply adding something to a particular run level with RC update won't automatically start it here in the session that you're currently in. RC update can do a few other things besides just add and delete services from run levels. If we go ahead and run man RC update, 
we can see some more information about the options and particular behaviors that this program has. This man page is pretty short because RC Update is a pretty simple program in keeping with the tendency for all of the OpenRC management programs themselves to be fairly simple and straightforward. You can read through this man page if you want some more information on RC Update. One thing that I want to go over here is the ability to use RC Update to get information about services on your system with the Dash V option. The, the man page simply says that Dash V or Verbose will just show all services. What that actually means if we were to run RC Update with the Dash V option you can see that it spits out a big long list. Let me pipe that to less. It spits out a big long list of processes in one column and then in another column it has run level names. Now as you can probably guess what this means is that any given service that is listed here is assigned to the run levels that correspond to it in the other column. What's interesting and important about the output of this command though is that this command will also show you services that are not assigned to any run levels. For instance you can see these here that have nothing in the run level column are being displayed here nonetheless. That's because there exist init scripts in the etsy init.d directory for these processes, but they are not assigned to any particular run level. If you'll recall from the previous video I said using the RC status command you could get information about any daemons that were assigned to a run level. Well there are certain daemons on your system, certain init scripts, that may not be assigned to any run level at all. And if you want to see them, probably the easiest way to do that is to run the RC update command with the dash V option. And you could do something like grep this output or page through it like I just did and get some information about the available processes that may not be assigned to any run levels on your system. Before I go, one last thing that I want to talk about is an OpenRC command that you can use to start and stop processes called rc-service. Now in my first OpenRC video, I showed you how to start, stop, and restart processes by sending commands to the scripts located in the etc init.d directory. Well in the comments of that video, Serge, who is a well-known Gentoo user who is active in the Linux YouTube community, mentioned that there's another way to start and stop processes, and that is using the command rc service. Using rc service really follows the exact same syntax that other open rc programs like rc update follow. I can do rc service followed by the name of a process, such as again ntpd, and then a command to pass to that process, such as stop. Enter my password. And you can see that that has the exact same effect as if I had passed the stop command to etsy init.d ntpd. It will stop ntpd. I can also do the same thing to start ntpd or any other process over again, or to restart it. Basically, you can use RC service to pass any command that you could normally pass to an init script directly to it without having to reference its actual location in etc init.d. If we take a look at the RC service man page, we can see that it mentions that it will locate and run an open RC service with the given arguments. Theoretically, in an open RC install, init scripts could be located in other places besides etc init.d, and you would have to know where these locations are in order to give orders to that given init script directly. The good thing about open RC is it will locate it for you, and all you need to know is the service's name and whatever commands you want to pass to it. So in that way, you can think of RC service as an alternative syntax for starting, stopping, restarting, and doing other things directly to services in OpenRC. RC service does the same thing that passing commands to etc init.d scripts does, and I, I will probably be using both forms of syntax at different times in future videos to do some of the same thing. There are several other features that RC service has that I would probably like to go over in a separate video dedicated specifically to RC service, but I was just going to mention it here at the end of this video, since for OpenRC users it's probably pretty attractive compared to issuing commands directly to etc init.d scripts, since it has such a simple syntax and since it will locate a service for you. I was not actually aware of the RC service program before I received Serge's comment in the previous video, so thanks again to him for letting me know. Alright, that will about do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. That should be a pretty good rundown on run levels in OpenRC. With the contents of this video and my previous video, you actually should have most of the tools that you need to manage an OpenRC system on a day-to-day -day basis. Really doing things like getting service information, starting, stopping, and restarting services, and adding and deleting services from run levels, those are the main things that you will be doing as a user of OpenRC. In the next video, I'm going to cover the global OpenRC configuration file, rc.com, which has tons of options for you to customize your OpenRC installed exactly to your liking. So be sure to tune in for that video, and until then, thanks for watching, and goodbye.